youngest chap to be indicted into the Radio Hall of Fame. Anyway, he was doing his radio show on a rather big commercial station and then suddenly he threw in the towel, changed his life, turned it upside down, literally moved to Australia with his family. He has written an incredible book about making that life-changing decision. Uh, Welcome to the show, Christian O'Connell. Hello, Zoe, darling. this is like oh. DJs assemble. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. You're in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> We're running the world right now on radio. Zoe, it's <laughs> lovely to talk to you again. And can I just say hello gorgeous. to my mum? Yes. My mum is listening to oh. me right now. Shout out to Jenny O'Connell. Oh, Jenny, she must be missing you like mad. When did you last see Jenny? Because obviously you're over in Oz and you can't travel. Yeah, I know. It feels like it's strange. When I told my mum that we were moving out here, I said, look, I'll be back twice a year. And then obviously COVID comes on. I haven't seen mum and dad and my sister in two years. Oh, my goodness me. Thank goodness for Zoom. That is a long time. Christian, I mean, you as a performer, you're phenomenal. In radio, you've always been, you're hilarious. You're anarchic. You've always been a trailblazer. Um, you know, and your breakfast shows are just gold. And all us DJs look at you and we kind of worship at your temple. But you suddenly jacked it all in and changed your life completely. You've written in the book, and can I say, I read the book and it made me cry so many times. A beautiful. Oh, bless you. Thank book. you, And like Sue says, you can make a very bad situation very funny as well, but it is really moving and it's a brave thing to share this story. Tell me a little bit about uh, what happened with you and your mental health, Christian. Well, I know we, we use that word a lot and we should do mental health, but really what happened to me is more about sort of heart and soul and what happens in our lives more than, and that's sort of what mental health should be really about. Um, so about seven years ago, I had like a really severe anxiety attacks and I'd never been nervous before in over 20 years of doing breakfast radio and TV and stand up, never had nerves around that area of my life. And they were so bad, I couldn't do my radio show. And it was always the thing in my life that I'd loved. And I'd, I guess I built an identity around being that guy and I was rewarded for doing well in it and suddenly not being able to do it and that threat of that being taken away from me my livelihood and you know my role as a provider to my kids and my wife was was awful um but i got help and the great thing was as i got help i learned some new things i grew through it i should just assure people in case people are thinking have a word with your mate Zoe. we've just got out of lockdown we don't want this buzz kid on the radio the book <laughs> the book does get funny okay it but it is very funny <laughs> okay. it is a very funny book uh, because that's the thing you always have such like sue says you do manage to make a, a bad situation a tricky situation you find thank the you, humor in it yeah thank you sue is that she's actually, head of publicity at the book company i was gonna but say thank you, sue. are you sure that's not jenny o'connell check that number yes. for these people yes. um so anyway when did the decision come to go to australia and take your lovely lass Sarah um, and Ruby and Lois your daughters and you know literally turn your life upside down I think it became once I sort of started to get better and uh, was able to go back and do my radio show and work through the panic attacks and anxiety is I started to realise and I don't know if this happened to you in your life so but when you get into your 40s life suddenly gets really really real yeah. it's like you're at a different level yeah, and all those certainties that you built up in your 20s and 30s they just start disappearing and suddenly you're like well what am I going to do now and you do the maths you know you're in the second half of life and you're like hang on has all the has all the exciting stuff happen now Is you're waiting it? for your kids yeah you're waiting for your kids to walk out the door every birthday they're getting closer to leaving the door what's not heartbreaking about that and you've got to work out what do i actually still want for my life for my heart and soul and i needed a new challenge and i read this great book called the second mountain it's about finding the second mountain in our lives and it really inspired me and so I guess it was a very big overcorrection to have an anxiety attack. It was like, right, let's go to Australia, and it's really <laughs> radio here is brutal. I mean, you get fired here. Our guest this morning, Christian O'Connell, his new book, No One Listens to Your Dad's Show. Actually, hurts my heart when I read that. By Christian O'Connell is out today from number one to no one. So, Christian, you've left us on a cliffhanger there. You've uprooted your beautiful girls. You've taken them to Australia. You're being trolled. The Australians don't want you on their radio. No, they really don't. How close did you come to throwing the towel in and just getting on a plane and going, I'm really sorry, girls. I've dragged you out here. We've got to go home. And how did you turn it around? 
I tell you, many times, but then, can I also just say something, right? Zoe, you're always very, very generous when anyone who comes on your radio show, the callers and, and guests and people like me. I think you're also someone, you are someone who's growing through really tough times in life, but you've grown through it, and you made yourself somehow bigger than it. I think you probably did what I did when something tough came along. Most of us, because we're pain and risk averse, we look the other way, yeah. whereas you actually did what I did. You look towards it, and there's, there's something magical that happens when you're brave enough to do that. So, yeah, it was hard, but I chose to do it. Yeah. I wanted a new challenge. Sometimes in life, be careful when you ask for a new challenge. When I found this challenge, I was like, can I have 50% less of a challenge of having no listeners and no mates over here? But oh, And things things change. But yeah, several times I was like, this is too hard. Why did I leave a comfort zone? They called it a comfort zone for a reason. I was When will this turn into a comfort zone? <laughs> um, but it did, it did change bit by bit. And I learned a lot. And, you know, now coming through it, the show somehow has been number one for a year and a half. Off, and they gave me a go, and which I'll always be really grateful for. Me and, the, me and the family got this new life out here, and we do things we've never done before. Still miss Britain so much. Yes, you know, I, not I can just imagine. family and friends. Yeah. Uh, Monster, uh, Munch. Yeah, Monster Munch. Yeah, Monster Munch. Monster Munch. Marks, Marks and Spencers. And Spencers. Plowman sandwiches <laughs> on granary, chili and spice takeaway in Dorking. Oh. My local takeaway, right? Those things are really important in your life. They've struggled to hang on since you guys left town. I reckon they probably boarded up. I called them after my first couple of weeks here and said, offered them money if they could tell me the recipe, right, of how they made their chicken dance out. They refused. I said, I'm in Australia. I'm not, I didn't come out here to open a curry house. They right? look at you. They're like, yeah, don't trust him. That's, a, that's yeah. been in the family for centuries, that recipe. They're not just yeah. handing that over. I know. Uh, I know. But you did. You've turned it around. I mean, it's an amazing story. And now the number one spot. Within so. 18 months. Um, I did say to you last night on the text, I was like, do you do seminars for how to turn bre breakfast shows around? Because, uh, you know, it's like You're Chris doing Evans. great. It's hard. You are smashing they've it. They've not been doing the ratings because it's been COVID. They're coming back in August, well, honestly. We had that last year. Just yeah, stop for a while. To tunnel out. Yeah, when it yes. stops and no, and no one can give me a hard time. Oh, so it's so good to talk to you. This is brilliant. Can I just and say one of my favourite parts of the book is where you interview uh, your wife Sarah and the girls uh, the back of the book Ruby and Lois uh, they're so beautiful your girls as well you know they, Thanks, they give it to you straight you oh, know God. there's some very funny moments about yeah, when you teenagers put, put do. your back out they don't, they don't care for bowl. your self esteem yep. and at some point they just suddenly start <laughs> they know where your weak spots are right And when they're teenagers and you're like how did you know that was a weak spot and it's like we've been watching you all these years <laughs> all these years yes, all these, they're like it's, little spies I know I think it's the thing with teenagers is where they suddenly realise that you don't know everything and no. that you're a complete fool and that you're making it all up. you're actually making it up. Yeah, you're making exactly. it up, yes. And then they've got that <laughs> on you. Uh, a beautiful thing you say in the book, to keep your heart open, uh, you've got to live with courage. Um, that is so such a beautiful phrase. I feel like getting that tattooed. Uh, it is an amazing book, Christian. No one listens to your dad's show from number one so to no one. It's very funny. It's inspirational and we love you. And we miss you. You're over there. We miss you. Can we listen to your show over here? Yes, I don't know if you know, but in the last couple of years, I've had something called the internet Have and they? the World Wide Web. Uh, podcasting's come along. No uh, one told I don't know me. if the BBC, I'm across these multi platforms, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not some sort of frontier DJ out here. <laughs> can you hear my words? Hello, London. Can you hear my words? <laughs> come in on me, wireless. <laughs> um, oh, Christian, always a joy. Love to your girls and uh, well Thank done. Thank you darling. very much, Zoe, and your family. Shout out to Ken Bruce coming oh, up after nine. He is. Pop master he's in the there, house. there, the master. He is. He's, he's in a lovely chino today. I think they've been Wowie. ironed. Got a Bleated. scene. Of course they know. are. Of course they are. Sharp like a knife. Thanks, baby. Take care. Thank you, Zoe. Bye-bye, Mum. Bye-bye, Mum. Bye -bye,